Hello guys, how are you? I am Mustafa Khalil, fourth medical student in MMC. Uh, actually, I'm really interested to be here today and I hope that you enjoy these sessions and find it knowledgeable also. I'm gonna talk today about an important situation that need a quick handle from us as a doctor because it's emergency and life-threatening condition. It's called cardiac tamponade. Yeah, I will start now. Cardiac tamponade. Tamponade refers to the pressure which obstructs the blood flow and the cardiac refers to the heart. So the cardiac tamponade means the pericardial sac around the heart full with the blood or a fluid, causing an increase in intrapericardial pressure that compress the heart so it can no longer fill with the blood, okay? Normally, the heart site inside the pericardial cavity and the pericardial cavity consists of the two layer. The outer layer is called the fibrous pericardial, which help to keep the heart inside in the chest cavity. And the inner layer is called the serous pericardial that includes the pericardial cavity. Pericardial cavity filled with fluid, usually less than 50 milliliters. Okay. Because the cell of the serous pericardial secrete and reabsorb the fluid. So usually there are no than more than 50 milliliters of the fluid in the pericardial space at any time. But in the cardiac effusions, when there are a fluid more than 150 milliliters in the pericardial space, so there are problems. So there are a cardiac tamponade leading to the cardiac tamponade. Depend in the two things, in the how quickly the fluid accumulations in the pericardial sac and how much, okay? So there are a more than one cause lead to the cardiac tamponade. The first and most important cause is the car accident. And it's a dangerous. So the car accident lead to the tamponade because the force impact the blood vessels around the heart and chest that made the fluid and the blood accumulate around the pericardial sac. And another is a stab wound that pinctures of the blood vessels and fill pericardium with blood. Another cause that tamponade also may be a complications of the patient suffer from a MI after a few days of MI because there are a weak point and uh, in the pericard in, uh, there are a weak point in the ventricle and that weak point may be a ruptures and lead to the accumulate of the blood from the chambers to the pericardial sac. Also, there are another cause maybe a heart surgery, but it's rare cause, and aortic dissections, cancers, hypothyroidism, uremic pericarditis, and chronic inflammation. All that cause is a long term, not like car accident or stables or, or, or MI. It's acute, leading to the cardiac tamponade. Now I wanna discuss the symptoms and signs that patients suffer from the tamponade. Tamponade means the heart doesn't stretch out fully between the contractions because the, uh, the fluid uh, pressures in the heart. So the chamber don't fall probably. When the chamber don't fall probably, means there are a less cardiac output. Less cardiac output lead to the hypotensions. Hypotension means less blood to the organ, less oxygen. So the less oxygen to heart to compensate that, the heart faster repeat, and I had a tachycardia. So now I had hypotensions and patients suffer from the tachycardia. Another symptom, and it's a really important symptom, is a pulse paradoxic. Pulse paradoxic mean there are a loss of the palpable pulse, okay, in the inspirations. So how mechanism that the patient suffer from the pulse paradoxic? In the pulse paradoxic, marked inspiratory degrees in arterial pressures related to the cardiac tamponade to the, inspira uh, to the inspiratory decline of the left ventricle systole. Left ventricle systole will decline about two uh, cause. May there are a rise in the right ventricle and diastolic volume and degrees in the left ventricle and diastolic volumes. In the cardiac tamponade, in the inspirations, 
specifically, the intraventricle septum shift toward the left ventricle cavity, and it's called reverse Birham phenomena. Reverse Birham phenomena. It's important because it's lead to the normal increase in the venous return to the right side. So decreasing the left ventricle pre uh, preload and catch up of the pulse during the inspirations. It's a classic sign and also may another cause like a decrease in the pulmonary venous return to the left side may lead to the decrease the left ventricle preload. All that cause leading to degrees and catch up of the pulse during the inspirations. The pulse paradoxic, it's a classic sign for the cardiac tamponade, but there are another related conditions like an acute asthma, congestive heart failure, a chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, tension pneumothorax, and pericarditis. Another one, symptoms, and it's really important, is a jugular venous distensions. In the patients suffer from the tamponade, there are also a trouble in the upper chambers of the heart, the atria. The atria can distend enoughly and accumulate of the venous. So the venous swears go. So have nowhere to go and butt back into the bag. Butt into the back to the bag, that why typically lead to the distant jacular vein, like in this patient suffer from the tamponade, okay? There are ejacular vein distensions. It's a hallmark for the patient of the tamponade. Also, there are another symptoms, static symptoms like uh, coughing, um, dyspnea, fatigue, weakness, and light headnesses. Now, as far as diagnostic tests for the cardiac tamponade, there are a four way to diagnose cardiac tamponade. The first one is a chest x-ray. Yeah. Chest x-ray show the slight widening and like a large ending of the, of the heart, like a kind of the water balance. So the heart in the chest x-ray of the patient of tamponade maybe show the heart um, heart water balloon. The, the second one is an echocardiogram. We'll see the excessive fluid and swinging of the heart inside the pericardium cavity. And it's also a real important diagnostic test. The third one is an ECG. ECG will show the tachycardia, low in the QRS and different high. Also may be seen the ST elevations and we will see also the PR interval depressions. The fourth diagnostic test and important also and in need a special measurement is called the hemodynamic monitoring. Hemodynamic monitoring meaning there are a measure after a big a cube a place in the heart. So this is a big called Swana catheter which is used to measure the pressure inside the old chamber of the heart. In the patient with a cardiac tamponade there are a high pressures inside the chambers and also it's equal in all chamber. And it's also made a hallmark for the patient with cardiac tamponade. Yeah. So now we know what's wrong with these patients, how we can react and treat these patients. Actually, it's a interesting procedure called pericardiosynthesis. It's that where a needle insert into the pericardial cavity and drain all fluid around the pericardial. It's emergency procedures and need uh, a quick handle from you as a doctor in the ER. So you need uh, mind in your mind, cardiac monitoring and catheter attach like to drainage systems, and also third point, an important point, it's to assist the drainage, like a type or slow or fast drainage. Finally, in the end, I wanna discuss the clinical aspect for uh, to more information and to these sessions. And we will discuss together a 40, a 34 years old man come to the emergency department with a fatigue and lightheadedness. The patient has a respiratory infection last week, and since then his energy level has been low with a shortness of a breath on mild exertions. Otherwise, a patient non-smoker all the time. The patient temperature 37 and a blood pressure is 18 to 60 millimeter for mercury. So the patient suffer from a hypotension. 
Okay. A pulse is 120. 120 mean the right tachycardia. Wow. And regular. His pulse become undetectable to palpitation during the inspiration. It's a really important sign. It's mean there are a patient pulse paradoxic. It's a classic sign. Lung are clear to the auscultations. There are no sounds. But the jugular vein are distensions. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Now we have a four hello mark, a blood pressure, hypotensions, pulse, 120 tachycardia, and we have a pulse paradoxic and jugular vein distensions, a plus fatigue and lightheadedness. The first one is acute myocardial infarctions. Yeah, in the acute myocardial infarctions, we had a hypotensions, tachycardia, and may see a jugular vein distensions. But pulse paradoxic, no, it's not expected in the patient with acute myocardial infarctions. So it's not the choice. B, acute viral myocarditis. The viral myocarditis may be used in the tachy and hypotensions, but also you not expected the uh, pulse paradoxics. Cardiac tamponade, oh wow. We have a uh, hypotensions, tachy, and uh, pulse paradoxic and jugular vein distensions. It's a choice, it's a correct choice. Septic shock and constructive pericarditis also we, we, we will see the fatigue and lightheadedness and blood pressures uh, degrees or techie, but the pulse paradoxicals is a hello mark not expected in this disease. Okay. Thank you very much for everyone listening. And it's a cardiac tamponade. Thank you.